in my hands. And that just makes it so real and it smells good. Welcome. This is A to A, author to author with Terry, and that's me. And I am so excited about our guests this week. But before we begin, I just want to say welcome to um, my regular subscribers and my new viewers. And I um I'm really excited that you're here. If you haven't subscribed, there's a red subscribe button down below and you can click on that and a little white bell will pop up and you click on that dingy bell and you won't miss any episodes. Also, my incredibly clever husband was able to put this tiny little picture on the lower right hand corner and if you click on that it'll walk you through this subscription uh, process so you can do it the fun way or you can do it the technical way it's up to you so um i am so excited to have you meet um this author, she and I have already had some incredible conversations. I wish you could have heard, uh, very uplifting and uh, encouraging. But I want to welcome you now to Diane Mills. Hi, Hi everyone. It's so good to be here. Thank you, Terry. I really, really am excited about our time together. And oh, viewers. Make sure that you like and comment uh, in the notes below because Terry and I are just excited to visit with you and talk to you, get to know you, make new friends. And Terry, I so appreciate this opportunity to be a guest on your special program. Oh, thank you. Well, it's really an honor to have you here. I've been a longtime fan, so that's one of the great great joys that I have in doing these programs. So let's get started. Um, now, I happen to know that you are one busy lady. I don't know how you do it. You're writing, you're teaching, you're, um, you're, you are like a social media maven and a reels maven. And um, so how do readers and how do viewers keep in touch with you, connect with you? Okay, that's a wonderful question. I suggest my website and it's dianemills.com, D-I-A-N-N Mills, M-I-L-L-S.com. And their followers and readers can contact me through email, my social media platforms and subscribe to my weekly blog and oh by the way those who choose to receive my blog also receive a letter greeting them and a nine-day devotional for their adventure with god mm. lots of information about books upcoming events and a special tab for book clubs so i am mm. I'm excited to share all of those things with you. You know, our our websites are like are like personalized calling cards. Come in, join me, let me get to know you, let's be friends. I agree. That's a great way to put it. And it's it's like um it's like we're inviting you into our virtual house. And you can come and we can show you all the different rooms, our books, our blogs and recipes and, and things like that. So that's. And by the way, um, you saw Diane's um, website come up and it's gone now, but don't worry, because down below in the description section, we'll have Diane's 
uh, website, her social media, where to buy, purchase her books, and all how to maximize your entries into this. It's a really good giveaway, uh, as you're going to find out later in the show. One of the things in the description section is a link to the interview blog. And um, I really go into more depth in, in the blog um, than I do in the YouTube. The YouTube, you know, I want it to be more candid and more free flowing. Um, so, um, so down below in the description section will be the link to that blog as well. Diane, your book, Facing the Enemy. It is a whirlwind of tension and suspense and mystery, but there is so much more. You cover so many different um, current events that are going on, like um, the selling of babies, um, dealing with forgiveness of the unforgivable and working through that process. So it's really, you've got all this incredible activity going on, and then you have these poignant and real moments that um, really, really touched my heart when I read it. So um, as I mentioned in my top picks for July, I love the book, which I knew I would, of course. But now I know, now that I know some background from your own story, parts of that book just really have carved a place in my heart. And, um, you know, it's helped me to really appreciate your book even more. Now, viewers, if you want to know what I'm talking about, you'll have to go to the, to the blog interview because that's where we discuss that information. I read the first line in my um, top picks for July of Facing the Enemy, but viewers just love to have the author read her book, so or his book. So um, can you read for us? Oh, surely. I, I love it. Um, you know, one thing I want to say is that a novel should be entertaining. Foremost, a novel is entertaining, but it should also inspire and encourage the reader by vicariously journeying a story with the character. That's why I write, and I love it. So I'm going to read to you the first, oh, about a thousand words, I guess, of the beginning of my story, Facing the Enemy. And I know you see the, um, uh, on my background here, you see a picture of the book, but this is in my hands. And that just makes it so real and it smells good. And, and I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just excited. Terry, when we get to heaven, can you imagine the libraries? And how we'll just mm. open the doors and just take in the smell of all those books. Mm. The smell of adventure. Okay, I, I need to uh, start reading here before I just get so thrilled about what we're talking about that <laughs> I lose track of time. Here we go. Yeah. Twelve years ago, my younger brother fell into an abyss of drugs and alcohol. He chose his addictions over mom and dad and me. Prayers for healing fell flat, but none of us gave up proving our belief in unconditional love. Then yesterday he called and my hope skyrocketed. Trenton said he missed me and wanted to make amends with his family, beginning with his older sis. We chose to meet at a popular restaurant for a late dinner within walking distance of my apartment. A knock on my cubicle jolted me back to reality. Gage, my work partner, towered in the entryway and grinned. Hey, what's going on? The sound of his voice caused me to tingle to my toes. <laughs> thinking, obviously you were a million miles away. His blue gray eyes bored into mine 
the intensity nearly distracting me. I leaned back in my comfy chair. My brother called, Trenton, the guy you haven't seen in years, the same, and he wants to meet tonight for dinner to talk about making amends. Dade shook his head. Risa, he has a record a mile long. He's planning on manipulating you, squeezing every penny he can get. I picked up an old photo of Trenton and me as kids. Dad had snapped it while we were in our tree house. I swiped at a piece of dust, then replaced it beside my photo of mom and dad. I must give him a chance. He's my brother. What mm -hmm. if he's gotten himself in over his head and needs his FBI agents to bail him out? I bit into my lower lip. Gage's words had a level of truth, even if I didn't want to admit it. I want to hear him out. Gage stepped closer. I don't want to see you hurt. Remember three years ago when he called you from a bar demanding money, cursed you until you hung up? The soft gentleness in his whispered tone said more than friend to friend. Think about canceling the dinner or let me go with you. Emotion rose thick in my throat. You mean well, and I, catching myself, I nearly said love. I appreciate your concern, but I'll be fine. Want me to call you afterward? He nodded. I, I can run by if you need to talk. He peered, or rather, I peered into the face of the man I adored. I will, promise. I arrived early at the restaurant to meet Trenton, anticipating his contagious smile, perfected by an overpaid orthodontist. <laughs> the phone attempted to keep my attention, but my mind swirled with how I wanted tonight to move forward against the reality of what had happened in the past. The host approached me. Trenton walked behind him, towering several inches above the short man. I held my breath and stood, not feeling my legs, only my pulse beating at the side of my brother. Trenton chuckled low. The familiar, dazzling, heart contrunt excuse me, heart-crunching expression that had always touched me with sibling love. Clear brown eyes captured mine. Gone were the dilated pupils and bone-thin body. My brother held out his buffed arms and I rushed into them. Risa, you look amazing, he whispered. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Nothing could have kept me away. I stepped back, noting the miracle before me, telling mom and dad wasn't a part of tonight's plan, but I wish they were. We'd all be blubbering. I swiped a tear and feared a humiliating sob would replace my already fragile composure. I want to remember this moment forever. Please stay strong this time. Oh, me too, sis. He gestured to the booth. Sit and let's talk and eat. I slid in and he took the opposite side of the table. A server presented us with menus and asked for our drink order. We'll have two Dr. Peppers, Trenton said. He remembered my favorite drink. No mention of alcohol. I breathed in deeply to steady myself. I wanted our reunion to be special, not me, a weeping mess. I've missed you. Trenton cocked his head and the mischievous brother from days gone by appeared. I've been clean for four months, working steady and enrolled in night school for the next college term. He took my hands and his features grew serious. But before I say another word, I'm sorry. I promise you I'll never hurt you, mom or dad again. Please forgive me for the mess I made of my life and dragging my family through the stench of it. I'd heard this before from his teen years into his twenties. Dare I believe our prayer had been answered? I forgave you years ago. All we ever wanted for you is a healthy body and mind. Thanks, sis. I knew you heard this before. I mean, I'm sorry, junk, but I'm well on my way. His words warmed me like a quilt on a chilly night. I can see it, feel it. Why tell me first instead of mom and dad? 
great times with you growing up that never left me. Memories rushed over me. The time we went camping by ourselves and it snowed. Birthdays, Christmases, all the treasured times I believed had vanished into the chasm of addiction. The server returned with our drinks and Trent and released my hands. Have you decided on your order, the server said. Neither of us had picked up our menus, but I often frequented the restaurant and ordered a vegan dish. Trenton opted for their pork chop and fixings. And I'll take the bill, he pointed at me. No arguments. Mm -hmm. My treat when we have dinner again. Got it. You are about to tell me something about us. He rubbed his palms on the thighs of his jeans. Two things stand out. The first one happened when I was four. So that made you 10. You were trying, helping me to climb an oak tree in the backyard. I was crying because my short legs couldn't swing high enough. Then I felt your hand on my shoulder. You boosted me up onto the branch, climbed up with me. Not long after that, dad built us a tree house. Oh, I love that tree house. You had your space and I had mine. What I'll always remember is what you said to me. Trenton, I'm your big sis. I'll always help you. I promise. Mm. I blink back the ocean of hopeful tears. Thanks. I remember our times in the treehouse, our private little world. One more reason I contacted you. I was six and you were 12. For three summers, mom and dad put me in swimming lessons, but I couldn't put my head under water. Not sure why. You convinced mom and dad that you could teach me how to swim. So every day we went to the neighborhood pool. And at the end of two weeks, I was swimming. Mm -hmm. I trusted you. Mm -hmm. I almost get emotional reading my own stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of families have pe people in their family that, you know, they've just chosen a hard and difficult path. And, you know, they don't always know that they take us down the path as well sometimes. So that's just beautiful, Diane. And then it gets really wild <laughs> really wild yes and a lot of the things that they said to each other just explode yeah and and it was so good it just how it developed Risa's character it really showed her heart and that is the person that um you consistently depicted through this story um which is like i said powerful so thank you thank you for reading that um so what are you working on now well i just put the finishing touches on a novel that focuses on a female private negotiator who's called to a hostage situation where two men are holding a dozen illegal immigrants at gunpoint. The hostages are freed, but it ends badly for the two abductors. The heroine attempts to comfort the grieving family only to find the hostage situation served as a cover-up for criminal activity. That's all I'm saying there. Now, my hero, he is a journalist who has a reputation of digging into dangerous situations to discover the truth. So together, they make a formidable team that paves the way for murder. And if they're not careful, it's their own. <laughs> yes. I'm excited about that. <laughs> My favorite word, excited. <laughs> so, I mean, I know we didn't talk about this, but where do you get these stories? Are they out of headlines? Do they just kind of pop into your head? I didn't. 
Well, uh, facing the enemy, as you already know, Terry, that originated when we lost our um, uh, our, our son to a pedestrian accident. And actually, uh, what what grips me when I read that first part is that was so much uh, our son, so much, uh, right down to the looks and the smile. Mm. Uh, so that came from a real life experience, plus that son and two other of my four sons uh, are adopted. So within facing the enemy, I used a lot of my own fears of when I uh, adopted and would the mother come back and was this all done the way it should have been done and things of that nature. With the book I just turned in, it is called The Outlier. Now that could change because titles mm -hmm. always change. But I was sitting in my doctor's office and he was <laughs> laughing because um, I'm sort of OCD when it comes to exercise every day and eating right and all those kinds of things. And he said, you know, Diane, you are the outlier for all my patients uh, who are your age. And I thought, outlier, outlier. That sounds like the title of a book. So <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, I just started thinking about that. And, um, and that's how this particular book came into being. And the fact that I live in Houston, uh, that the undocumented uh, immigrants are so much in the news. And to be honest with you, I wanted to show both sides of, of the tragedy that can happen uh, with, with those trying to get into our country for good reasons, for good yes. policies, and also those that are in it for personal gain. So... You know, my stories come everywhere. I remember my very first romantic suspense came from a dream. And uh, God just gives me dreams that end up being stories. That's happened a lot of times. Uh, and so that's where my ideas come from. It's like, beware what you say to me. Oh, my goodness. I have to tell you this. We <laughs> sit in a small group. And I have to tell you that myself, in my small group, there are... 800 people in a small in, group in, yeah, my small group and uh, it's on biblical literacy it's amazing but anyway there's always five ladies who sit behind me and they're like a sisterhood so I always have to hear what they uh, have to say because I'm thinking I might use this or I might use that so this past Sunday I got the nerve to turn around and I said to them I hope you don't mind, but I love listening to your dialogue. And one of them said, does that mean that someday we might find ourselves in a book? <laughs> yeah. It's true. Well, I can't wait for that book. I really can't. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the A2A interview blog has a lot more fascinating information about you and the info to increase a viewer's chance for the giveaway. Plus there's a delicious recipe that the hero Gage has offered uh, us and it's the walnut fudge cake. Oh my gosh. How do you stay so skinny if you're making stuff like that? Well, this is what I do. I make the dessert, cut out enough for that um, meal. And then I slice it up into small pieces for me and bigger ones for my husband and put them in the freezer to pull out. If not, I would probably eat the whole thing and weigh 250 tomorrow. You, you are so disciplined. I, I am so impressed. You're, you're just like my hero. Um, well, so one of the things that we like to do on these video, uh, interviews is we like to do some fun things and some kind of silly things. So one of the fun questions I asked Diane was to tell us something about yourself that probably no one even knows. <laughs> okay. I've already confessed that I'm a vivid dreamer. So one night 
I dreamed that I must enter either a Facebook door, an Instagram door, or a Twitter door. And I didn't know which one to go in. So my husband tells me, oh, honey, just choose one and I'll resize you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, so... uh, which, which he would have done, I have no doubt. He, he calls himself uh, his, uh, my executive assistant of whatever I need. But lately he's called himself a PA, a pickle averter, because he knows <laughs> I get myself into trouble. <laughs> which is so funny because my my special enduring in, endure, endearment Yes, I are a writer. An endearment that I have for my husband is this pickle man. And it comes from the the movie Crossing Delancey Street. We love we love everything Jewish and Yiddish and, and things like that. So we love that movie. And there are pickle guys in in New York and um you guys have to see that movie. Bob will put the picture up there so that you can see it but did you ever see that movie crossing no, but i've got to see it now since oh we yeah <laughs> it is it's the most wonderful love story it is just really quirky and if it's going to be quirky it's you know i'm going to watch it so with that i bet you have some superpowers or are there some superpowers that you would like to have I would say that if I have a superpower, it's the ability to see story everywhere. No matter where I am, I see story because life is story. And of of all the people in this world, every one of them is a story. So Mm. I I love that. But what Mm. I wish I had is the ability to transport myself anywhere in the world at any time. Imagine those new adventures Mm -hmm. that would develop from walking new territory, experiencing new cultures, new people, hugging, hugging necks. Oh, I love that. And you know, when I write, I do my best to go to where a story is set. So my feet can touch the same ground and I can experience everything that that particular locale experiences. And I just love it. Uh, I I just love it. It's, um, It's creating new worlds. Well, the superpower would be the ability to transport. So no passports, no late flights, no finding hotels. You just in, experience, and out. That would be a superpower that I would love, too. Oh, and I love research. Oh, this morning I spent the whole time researching how to survive in the wilderness and can I embark upon a certification to have survival skills so I know firsthand what to do (laughs) from a character. Now, I don't know if I'll just do a lot of interviewing or maybe I just might try it, but (laughs) I love research. Um, I have taken the FBI Citizens Academy class I've taken the ATF Citizens Academy class. I have ridden the line with the Border Patrol. I've been to what? Africa. Uh, I love research. It It's like never growing up. It's like, okay, I'm <laughs> going to be Peter Pan. And just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today's, I'm, today I'm a crossing guard. Tomorrow I'm the president of the United States. So, yes. <laughs> And the next day I may be a crime lord. You never know what I do. <laughs> so on that note, uh, this month's A to A giveaway, um, Diane and Tyndall House will is generously offering they're supplying the facing the enemy paperback. 
But Diane is doing something special. Yes, now, what is that? I'm going to get this on the right side so everyone can see. Oh, yes. This journal, the developing of it, the creation of it, uh, was on my bucket list. I wanted every page to have a scripture and a quote that was really important to me. So this is an opportunity for whoever wins this particular journal to create their own adventure. It says walking with God, stepping out in faith and accepting the unpredictable. I want you to write your adventure. Journaling is so very, very important to me because the the things change how we're feeling and what we're experiencing day by day. Our walk with God, our walk in interacting with other people. If it wasn't for journaling, I, I really would be lost. And it goes back to facing the enemy. When we lost our son, I journaled all of those, the sorrow, the pain, the anger, the betrayal, the shaking my fist at God. At, Why did you let this happen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I was able to write the book, I took a brave step forward and opened that journal up. So Facing the Enemy is also my healing book. But it began with journaling. And mm -hmm. that's why I want to pass that on to someone. Can you open it up so people can see what it looks like sure. inside? Sure. Oh, there, um, uh, lines. I'm not giving you prompts. I'm giving you a quote or or a scripture at the bottom of the page that mm -hmm. I hope you read. But this is for you. This mm -hmm. is your story, your life. You create it. You are the author. Uh, make it real. Make it credible. Don't be afraid to write the the feelings that are tearing you apart or the mm -hmm. victories, or the challenges, your mm -hmm. weaknesses, your flaws, those good things, put them in there. Someday, yeah. Someone will really, really uh, be thrilled and inspired to have that journal. Yeah. I mean, that's a legacy that we can pass to our children, that they'll get insights into our heart because as as parents you know we have to be strong and brave and smart and all those other things they don't know the doubts they don't know the uh struggles that we have to you know and question our own parenting styles and um decisions that we make and those are the places to do that because don't you find that as you're writing, it's like revelation after revelation begins to happen? Oh, so much so. And Terry, I'm a panster. Everything comes organically out of my character. That's amazing. Um, and so when something new, enlightening, a revelation happens, oh my goodness, it's as much a surprise to me as it is to the reader and the character. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of a hybrid. Uh, mm -hmm. I have I have to start out. I have to start out at least with a synopsis, and then um, and then they'll come to this point where oh my gosh, I I have to read. I have to write. I can't I can't do this anymore. I have to write. So yeah, I. But you know, my editor really wishes that I would outline everything. <laughs> I hand her a synopsis and hope a trickle of it is what happens. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Kristen at Tyndale. Um, now, how many viewers would like to have this amazing um, giveaway, this amazing gift, both the book and the journal? So uh, if you're looking for opportunities to increase your chance to do that, go to the um, go to the bottom in the description section and then also to the blog interview. And there are all sorts of tips so that you can have up to six 
entries into the giveaway. Now the drawing will be held Friday, August the 11th. And, uh, and by the way, if you're already a subscriber to YouTube and you're already a subscriber to my newsletter, listen, if you, as long as you comment and like, and share, you're going to get all six of those, um, entries. So makes it nice, but the caveat is, uh, only entries to from the contiguous US. I can't can't seem we can't seem to figure out a way to work around being able to send to Alaska and uh, Hawaii or any of the other countries yet. But I'm still hopeful. So, Diane, do you have any final words before we sign off? I enjoy hearing from readers. Every person I meet is an opportunity for a new friend. We are all on a journey. So let's pray and help and encourage each other along the way. And Terry, thank you so much for this opportunity to make new friends. Oh, and for all of you, don't forget to enter that August 11th giveaway. I'm, uh, I'm thrilled. I started to say excited, but I didn't. But I'm <laughs> thrilled uh, for this giveaway, and I'm thrilled for you. Yeah, I use the E word a lot, too. So don't, <laughs> don't fret. So um, thanks, everyone, for watching. This is the 32nd interview that I've done. So I'm coming up on three years of of these interviews. So I'd, I've been very grateful to be able to meet such incredible people like you, Diane. Um, and remember, once again, down in the description section are all those special links. And just know that those subscribes and likes and follows on Instagram and all the other social media, they really do make a difference for authors. They they really do help us and they're a way for us to connect with you as well. So thank you. Uh, next month, uh, my A2A episode will feature best-selling and award-winning author and also my friend, Carrie Taransky. I love that. Isn't she a sweetie? Oh, she is a sweetie. And when you were talking about Kathy, I thought, oh, she's such a sweetheart, too. And now to have Carrie on your program also, that'd be great. Well, the three of us, um, we when I lived in the Pennsylvania area, I'm in Georgia now, but when we lived in the Pennsylvania area, at least once or twice a year, um, we would have a writer's retreat at... Um, at, on the shore, on the New Jersey shore. So um, thank you so much, Diane, um, for being my very special guest. And viewers, thanks again for watching. And I'll look forward to seeing you next month. But until then, God bless and keep reading. <laughs> keep reading, keep reading. <laughs>